We're going to solve these six examples of determining if a set of vectors is linearly independent. The first four we can do by inspection. We'll basically just look and be able to figure it out. The second two will require a little bit more linear algebra. There are chapters in the description so you can skip around the video as you please. Let's begin by reviewing the definition of a linearly independent set of vectors. We say that a set of vectors is linearly independent if no vector in the set can be expressed as a linear combination of the others. So getting into our problems and looking at number one, are these two vectors linearly independent? Is it possible to express one as a linear combination of the other? In this case, yes, because u2, for example, is simply u1 multiplied by 2. So indeed, we can express one vector as a linear combination of the others. In this case, it's fairly straightforward, just u2 equals 2u1. Hence, this is not a linearly independent set of vectors. These two vectors are not linearly independent. So I'll put an x next to this one. Those vectors are not linearly independent. Now what about problem 2? We have three vectors in the space r squared. In problem one, we were quickly able to determine that the vectors aren't linearly independent because one vector was a simple multiple of another. If we look at these three vectors, at a glance, we do not see any one vector that's just a multiple of the other. However, we can't conclude these vectors are linearly independent just because none of them are multiples of each other, because there's three of them. So it may be possible to multiply u2 by something and multiply u3 by something so that they add together to produce u1. In fact, that is possible, and we know for sure because we have more vectors here than the dimension of the space. R squared is a two-dimensional space, so in this example, we can quickly say that these vectors are not linearly independent because we can't have three linearly independent vectors in a two-dimensional space. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson talking about the dimension of a vector space, if that's new to you, but the dimension of a vector space is the number of linearly independent vectors necessary to create that space. If we have more vectors than necessary, three more than two, they can't all be linearly independent. In problem three, we have two vectors in R cubed. It's certainly possible to have two linearly independent vectors in R cubed. And in this case, because again, there are only two vectors, we can determine if they're linearly independent or not by just checking if they are scalar multiples of each other. And if we look at the first components, we see that the first component of u1 would have to get multiplied by 4 to produce the first component of u2. So if they are scalar multiples of each other, then u2 must be 4 times u1. But we see that's not the case, because 4 times these other components do not match up with the components of u2. So these two vectors are not multiples of each other, so they are linearly independent. Again, if we had a third vector, we'd have to do a little bit more work, which we'll see in the final two examples. But if we only have two vectors, then them not being multiples of each other means that yes, they're linearly independent. Next, we have example four. These are two matrices in the vector space consisting of all two by two matrices. Are these two matrices linearly independent? If you look at it quickly, you should ask, hey, can I multiply A by anything to get B? And the answer is yes. If we multiply the matrix A by the scalar 3, it becomes the matrix B. 8 times 3 is 24, 2 times 3 is 6, and so on. These vectors are not linearly independent. The vector, which in this case is a matrix, B, is just three times A. So no, not linearly independent. All right, now we're going to do examples five and six, which are a bit more involved and will require use of a critical theorem. And here that theorem is. This is what we'll typically use in non-trivial cases when we're trying to show a set of vectors is linearly independent. We have to show that the only way you can construct a linear combination of the vectors that's equal to zero is if you multiply them all by zero. The vectors are linearly independent, so there's no way to combine them so that they cancel out unless you multiply them all 
by zero. That's how we prove the set is linearly independent. So here's what that looks like with problem five. We have these three vectors in R cubed. It's certainly possible to have three linearly independent vectors in R cubed. So we write this equation, K1 times V1 plus K2 times V2 plus K3 times V3 equals zero. And the hope, if we're trying to show that these vectors are linearly independent, is that the only way this equation is true is if k1, k2, and k3 are all zero. Now, if we replace v1, v2, and v3 with their component forms, we get this equation, which then leads into this system of equations. This first column represents the k1 variable, which is being hit by the components from v1, so negative 4, 0, and 1. The second column represents the k2 variable, which is being hit by the components of v2, 1, 1, and 2, and so on. And this is equal to this. We have to show that the only solution to this system is the trivial solution. That's how we will prove that the vectors are linearly independent. There's two ways we can do that. The first is with straightforward Gauss-Jordan elimination. If we perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this coefficient matrix, you can verify that we end up with this row-reduced echelon form matrix, which immediately would tell us K1 equals 0, K2 equals 0, and K3 equals 0. So indeed, the only solution to this homogeneous system is the trivial solution, which implies that the set of vectors is independent. An easier method is to use this previously proven equivalence. We know that if the determinant of our coefficient matrix is non-zero, then this homogeneous system, which is exactly the system we're looking at, ax equals zero, this system has only the trivial solution. So we could just take the determinant of our coefficient matrix, and if it's non-zero, we'll know that the only solution to our system is the trivial solution, which is what we're trying to demonstrate. Now, the determinant we see here, if you do the calculation, is negative 25. We could do a cofactor expansion along the first column, or just use the diagonal trick for determinants of 3 by 3 matrices. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on those topics. But once you find the determinant, again, we find that it's non-zero. And that implies that the only solution to this homogeneous system is the trivial one. Hence, the vectors are linearly independent. Here's one more example in R4. We have these four vectors. We're trying to figure out if they are linearly independent. We write this equation, k1 times v1 plus k2 times v2, etc., equals zero. If the vectors are linearly independent, the only solution to this equation will be the trivial solution. We can replace the vectors with their component forms, and again, we end up with an equation like this. Column 1 represents K1, and it's getting hit by these components of V1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Column 4, for example, represents K4, which is getting hit by these components of V4, negative 3, 4, 1, negative 2. To determine if the only solution here is the trivial solution, we can use Gauss-Jordan elimination or just calculate the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Performing Gauss-Jordan elimination on this coefficient matrix, you can verify, gets us to this row echelon form. Columns 3 and 4 do not contain pivots, so they are not pivot columns, and so the variables they represent are free, those variables being k3 and k4. So k3 and k4 are both free variables. We can set those equal to parameters, say t and s. Then k2 would equal negative 3t plus 5s, and k1 would equal 2t minus 2s. So we see that this time there are infinitely many non-trivial solutions because we have these two free variables. So these vectors are not linearly independent. It's not the case that the only solution to this system is the trivial one. If you take the determinant of this 4x4 four four matrix, you'll find that you get 0. And so, again, that would tell us that the homogeneous linear system 
does indeed have non-trivial solutions. And again, that implies that these vectors are not linearly independent. So that's how we determine if a set of vectors is linearly independent or not. There are some problems we can pretty much just do by inspection. We can look and see is one vector a multiple of another, or is it possible to add a couple vectors together to get another? Or are there more vectors than the dimension of the space? Because you can't have more linearly independent vectors than the dimension of the space. That's not possible. In more complicated examples, we use this theorem, which in the end comes down to Gauss-Jordan elimination or finding determinants. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.